Okay, this is lecture 27, and we're going to be talking about some surface runoff uh, aspects uh, in terms of loss, excess, and the hydrographs. And so I'm going to talk to you about hydrograph components. I'm going to look at rainfall runoff analysis, and we're specifically going to look at this thing called fee index, which is a uh, essentially a constant value of infiltration. And we're, uh, you know, converse to like the Green App method or the Horton model or the NRCS runoff model. Uh, we've got a constant value here of infiltration uh, amount or rate, and that's called the fee value or the fee index value. So this lecture, I'm really going to center on using real data to, um, to look at hydrologic processes in a basin. And we're going to culminate by looking at how do I calculate from real data what that fee value is uh, when we tease all that information out. Now, from uh, now until the end of the course, we're going to, you know, basically concentrate on those hydrologic processes necessary to model the runoff in a particular watershed or basin. We're going to basically predict that stream flow hydrograph. So we've been talking, we mentioned about rainfall, we've covered that, we've covered infiltration, and another aspect of that's going to be this fee index we're going to talk about today, but then we're going to uh, go into the rainfall runoff process, and we're going to use a model uh, called the um, unit hydrograph uh, theory. That will be in later lectures, but we're going to get into that and we're going to talk about uh, how to use that model to translate rainfall into a runoff value. So this is a hydrograph. So I've got time on the x-axis and I've got discharge on the y-axis. And you can see here in the black, we've got this runoff hydrograph. And so up to some point, we had this flow was decreasing. We call that a base flow recession. Well, remember base flow comes from groundwater. And so as you look at the um, stream and it's been dry for uh, many weeks or maybe even months, there still is flow in certain streams, those perennial streams. And that flow is driven by groundwater. We call that base flow. And so we have some rainfall that falls under this onto the watershed. And then you can see we have this increase in the discharge. So this is driven by the rainfall and be a little more exact. It's the excess rainfall. This part here is still the base flow. So we have to separate out the base flow from the, the amount of, or the runoff that's uh, the, the part of the hydrograph that's due to the runoff. So we have what we call the rising limit of the hydrograph. We have the peak of the hydrograph, also known as the crest. And then we have the falling limb. And at some point, the runoff actually stops and this base flow or this hydrograph is driven by the base flow. And again, because there's infiltration into the groundwater system, we actually end up having a larger value of base flow uh, here at this point in time at point six, than we do at point two, the beginning of runoff, because there's been a, a certain amount of recharge through that infiltration into the groundwater system. And then that's reflected in the, the amount of flow that's in the, uh, the stream that's due to what we call base flow or the groundwater flow. Again, this area in blue is the runoff volume from the rainfall excess. So you remember we did some exercises where we, we computed an equivalent uh, value of runoff in terms of uh, uh, equivalent rain, so I should say equivalent rain value of runoff. So we can take this volume here in blue. And if we divide that by the drainage area, that gives us a value of, of rain, equivalent rainfall. So we would have to separate off the base flow from that if we wanted to look at, okay, what is the, the uh, equivalent amount of rain? Because if we, we, if we included the base flow in that, that would give you a false sense of the runoff process, what actually was excess uh, precipitation. Because again, 
even though this base flow here is higher at two, uh, six than it is two, uh, this is because it went through the uh, infiltrated into the unsaturated zone down into the into the groundwater uh, uh, table and has provided this additional flow because the groundwater table has risen some. All right, so this is kind of a, a schematic here that talks about where we're at with, with this process. Just to remind you, we've got some sort of input rainfall then we have to account for abstractions and, and infiltration. And the uh, amount that's, that's left over is our rainfall excess. And so if we look at the original total rainfall here, you can see we've got this hiatus graph, but that's total rainfall. We have to separate off what goes to infiltration. We have various models to do that. Uh, this is a, 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 just a, a, a perfect Hortonian uh, decay function. Uh, for the Horton model, uh, the green ampta might look very similar to that. As I mentioned, the phi index would take a constant value and, uh, uh, and, and basically say, okay, the infiltration is constant no matter where you're, where you're at time zero in the rainfall uh, hydrograph or at uh, four hours into it. And so uh, we've been discussing the green amp model. We discussed the Horton model the NRCS model. And then uh, today we're going to get a fee index. If you're wanting a more simplified infiltration model, you can get a fee index from real data. And this is a useful exercise because it, what it does is it really uh, further cements in your mind the conceptualization of how rainfall and runoff processes work, you know, how the infiltration process works, being able to work with real data. That's, a, that's the point of lecture 27. So the first thing, we want to talk about is something called this base flow separation. If you remember back here on this, we talk about the base flow. Well, how do you actually separate that out? And there are various methods, and I'm not going to make you an expert on base flow separation in this lecture, but I want to introduce you to those methods, and then um, and, and that way you've got some familiarity with how uh, various um, uh, methodologies work. Now, if you've got a hydrograph that you collect at a USGS stream gauging station, so you're here and, and this is time and this is the flow rate. Uh, so you've got some base flow runoff here and then all of a sudden you have a, a rainfall event and you get this hydrograph that looks like this. Well, how do you get this base flow separation? We could just take and, and go straight line out here and call that the base flow just level. There's a number of methods to do that. We're going to talk about those. So if we look at um, the depletion curve, which is this area from here to here on the hydrograph as it's coming down, we call that the falling limb, limb of the hydrograph. We can also look at this from a uh, Horton in his 1933 paper talked about the depletion curve or the master base flow recession curve. And what he did was he described the flow as a logarithmic, or I'm sorry, as an exponential decay. And much like uh, the infiltration rate was an exponential K, if you remember, we had the Horton model F is equal to F uh, sub uh, C, uh, C plus. I'm trying to go, go from memory here. Uh, e, the minus K, T, uh, F, O minus F, C. Um, if we had that uh, model that you were looking at there, actually, I think this is F, O here. Um, if you look at this, this is a decay a value of this infiltration uh, rate. Well, we've got the same kind of thing here. Let's get rid of this if I can. Let me try to erase the... Uh, Annotation, it's not allowing me to do that very well. I want to erase this, just get rid of it where we got some room here. If I look at this model, that this is the same kind of thing when we have this, uh, uh, this um, decay this exponential decay on the runoff hydrograph. And so what Cor Horton did was he, he described that function uh, as a, an exponential decay where you've got some value at T1 here and you get your next value at T2. He's got this uh, assuming, you know, calculating it at T2 based on what it was at T1 and then you've got some decay constant and the difference between the times. 
Now, uh, if you look at this, you can do a logarithmic transformation and turn this into a linear plot. So if I take all my data and plot Qs in log space uh, versus the time, you can see that if I do that on this decay, the, the, the data becomes linear. And so what Horton pointed out was, is that you have this discontinuity in the linear plots of the of the data when it's got log Q versus time in the area where the mechanism that drives the, the uh, flow in the, in the stream changes from a runoff dominated flow to a base flow dominated flow. And so this discontinuity is the point that you would have uh, this difference between the runoff and the base flow. And you can see here that uh, when we connect the, this point here, which this is all base flow before then, you've got various ways that you can connect from here to this discontinuity or this area where base flow becomes the dominant process that controls the flow in the stream. And so uh, as we go through we, uh, the next couple of slides, we'll look at the various ways of getting how this curve is shaped. Sometimes it's just a direct line or a direct straight line. There are other ways to do that. Again, I'm not gonna make you an expert in this, but just introducing you to the various methods. So as I mentioned, you've got this straight line method, okay? And this is where we just simply draw a horizontal line from the point which runoff begins to the intersection with the following limb of the hydrograph. So what is that? That means that I take this point right here where the runoff begins, and then I draw this horizontal line out here somewhere. And in, in many cases, uh, you'll be approximately around this location of where this discontinuity happens. It, it might not be exact, but it will be approximate. And, and so you, you, know, you can plot the data in log, Q versus time and see where that is. You can also just draw this straight line and see how they compare and you make a judgment call. So that's the straight line method. Then you've got this fixed base method, which is where the surface runoff is assumed to end at a fixed time. It's some time in, which is a fixed time after the hydrograph peak. And, and that can also be uh, dominated by uh, looking at um, uh, you, you know, some for forward in time by looking at a great, a large number of hydrographs, maybe in those hydrographs, you've plotted the log Q versus time. And you've said, well, you know, basically there's this fixed time period that's going to, that's going to um, be after the peak is when the runoff uh, uh, dominated flow will stop and it will become more base flow dominated. That may or may not agree with uh, the plots of the uh, log Q versus time data. And, and what happens here in this ba fixed base method is you project this line of flow downward until you get under the peak of the hydrograph. And then you draw a straight line from that point up to this time period in after the hydrograph. So that's called the fixed base method. And then the last one uh, we're going to cover is there you've got, we go back to this point of looking at this discontinuity point where the log Q versus time or agreeing with a point where it's, you know, you're doing this straight line out there into, into time. Um, again, um, I misspoke a little bit earlier when I talked about this, just a straight line. Sometimes this is horizontal. Sometimes they'll plot this data and you can see there's a slight slope to this. OK, and so, um, it, again, it's it's a it's again a, an interpretation thing when people start looking at base flow separation methods. Now, in this particular uh, situation, we also you'll notice there's also an inflection point in the data up here. So when you plot this log Q, not only do you get this where it becomes it goes from a, um, a runoff dominant flow to a base flow dominant flow at this point here, this discontinuity, you could also plot the log Q versus time. And you'll notice if I plot it on up here, uh, I, I would likely have some kind of discontinuity and inflection point right here as well. And so if I note that, 
and I get this inflection point. I also have this inflection point here. I'm sorry, not 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 there, but over here. Okay, so let me uh, let's redo that. Bear with me a second. So let me get my eraser back out. We're, we're, we're perfectly clear what we're talking about here. If I uh, have this point uh, of the inflection here, I've got my other inflection point there. In the uh, variable slope method, I project this, you know, I've come off this recession curve here, project down underneath the peak of the hydrograph. So here's my peak. And then I draw a linear line up to the inflection point. Okay. And then I uh, essentially draw this on over and connect over to my other inflection point. So what, what we're doing is we're, we're going to great lengths here to not just make this a simple straight line connection. Now, uh, in my opinion, uh, are we are we doing a whole lot extra here? Well, possibly you're, you're getting some additional a big runoff generated, the excess rainfall or the runoff dominated flows. But again, um, I'm not going to um, uh, get too deep into the weeds with you on the base flow separation methods. Uh, I'm not going to assign a quiz or or a um, uh, an actual computational quiz or computational final exam problem to you. You won't see anything on the homework assignment, but what you're, you're going to have to understand is that you do have to uh, separate the base flow off when you start doing computations for excess rainfall, uh, you know, equivalent excess rainfall. So uh, when I give you a quiz problem, it's going to be looking at, okay, I'll tell you what the base flow is. I'll tell you what assumptions to make. I might tell you just to draw a straight line between one point and another. I mean, I could tell you to plot the log of Q versus time. That's a little hard to do in a quiz problem, but it's not beyond the realm. Uh, I will not uh, leave it to your interpretation. I'll give you some very direct points and you'll understand that you, you know, the big thing here is to understand that you have to separate off the base flow because it's a different process that drives the flow. Whenever we're dealing with real data, and we're trying to extract understanding out of that real data. We have to be able to separate out the base flow. All right. So again, this cartoon here is just another thing where we're showing the direct runoff from the base flow. Now, this phi index method um, is an approximate infiltration rate. As I've said, it's a constant value. And this formulation here is a way to compute that approximate infiltration rate from real data. So what we've got here is we're going to take our real data and our real data is going to be in the form of a discharge hydrograph. And we're going to also have a rainfall hydrograph. So we'll have various time increments of rain. And I've got a hanging bar chart here to, to represent that uh, rainfall uh, hydrograph. I've got the discharge here. Uh, uh, and we will have to go in and we will have to figure out, okay, we're going to separate off the base flow. And so then we're going to go through and we're going to calculate a volume of flow underneath the hydrograph that's due to the rainfall runoff process in Nigeria. That becomes my equivalent value of of, uh, of runoff volume in terms of amount of uh, its equivalent rain. We're going to use the abbreviation R sub D. And here it is right here. We're gonna have the volume of in inches or centimeters. That's represented here in this equation. Now, we have these hydrographs of time increments of rain. That's represented by capital R. That's the observed rainfall in time interval in. And then I've got, you know, in this particular example here, I'm showing four values of positive um, rainfall intervals, okay, uh, that, uh, that we've got. And we're going to have a number of those that are, that are going to be, uh, this will be the 
total number here is four, but I don't know that that N is going to be equal to four. It may be less than four because what we're talking about here is the number of rainfall intervals that contribute to the direct runoff. And we have to do this by trial and error. And I'm going to work a problem uh, in the lecture, in the in-person lecture that kind of goes through this process of how we compute that. We've got At a time interval about here. And if you look at the units on this, phi, which is in inches per hour, times delta T, which was in this particular case has got to be in units of hours. And then this rainfall amount is in inches. So it's inches minus inches is equal to inches. And we're going to go through a trial and error process to compute things. So again, this card to finding us get rid of the, uh, the, the, the amount that's not going to be running off. So I've got some rainfall excess, and then I'm going to put that into some sort of uh, model to get direct runoff hydrograph. And then I'm going to add that back to baseball. That's where we're going in the predictive mode. Here, we're going backwards. Uh, to get the fee index. In this particular case, the fee index, instead of like this Horton model or this green amp model, which is time variable, we're going to have a constant value of fee. And we're going to say that everything underneath that is going to be infiltrated. Everything above that is due to my rainfall excess. And again, this is going to make more sense as we go on. We're using real data in this process to go from real data points here to the direct runoff, and then computing this V index. All right, so uh, I'm going to work this example problem in class and we'll go through it. Uh, you, you can also see that it's in Canvas uh, in, in terms of um, being able to see the computations if you want to take a look at those ahead of time. 